Okay, so in this video what I'm going to show is uh, what you might call a box joint or finger joint technique. Uh, and that's really useful for joining two parts uh, for a box or two parts where they need to come together at a corner. Uh, so to start this off, I'm going to make another sketch. I'm just going to do this as a rectangle, although this could be just about any shape. Uh, let me go ahead and extrude this. Uh, just like in the, in the first technique, I want to make sure I define a variable here. So this does not, if we had defined the variable in another part studio, it does not carry forward into this part studio. So I'm going to define my cardboard thickness variable. I'm going to say that it's 0.16 inches. And click the green check. Uh, what's that? Uh, so this is a variable. When we're adding in that, that hashtag and then a name, that's a variable in Onshape, and that just stores a value. So I can always go back to this variable, because if I had measured my cardboard at a different thickness, like 0.158 inches thick, anything that used that variable, whether it's an extrude or a dimension, would automatically update to use that new value of the variable. So that's why it's so important about, and, like, and powerful. Okay? So let's say that I've got another part now that I want to have as the side of a box. So I'm going to make a sketch over here. I'll look at this from the back. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make another rectangle right here. And as I'm making this in my sketch, I'm allowing this to kind of connect to the bottom piece here but I'm not defining the width of this yet. I'm just kind of clicking arbitrarily. And uh, what I'm going to do now is use my dimension tool to make sure that this piece is also the thickness of a piece of cardboard. So I'm going to say hashtag cardboard thickness. Uh, you can actually just hit enter as soon as that pops up. And now this rectangle is automatically going to be whatever I defined that variable to be. So because I defined it to be 0.158 inches, that rectangle is now that width. So now I can go ahead and extrude this back to whatever uh, whatever width, whoops, i got to finish my sketch. Uh, I can extrude this back to whatever width I want this other piece to be. Let's say that it's 5 inches. And these are going to be two sides of my box. Now here's the thing. These, oh whoops, when I did that extrude, I need to make sure that I make this a new part instead of adding on. There we go. So I've got two parts. I've got the front of my box and I've got the side of my box. Now I want to join those two parts together. So I've got a few different ways that I can do this. Uh, what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to go to my front view and I'm going to make another sketch on this front view. And similar to what I had done in the earlier video, I'm going to turn off this part's visibility and I'm going to reuse some of the lines from the one that I just made, from the second part that I just made. So I'm going to, uh, going to project why is it not allowing me to project that in? What's that? Uh, oh, I'm on my point. <laughs> You're right, thank you. I thought I had clicked on my use project command. There we go. That's more like it. All right, I'm going to project this line in, and I already know the edge, so that should be just fine right there. That's cool. Okay, so I'm done projecting. I can just go back to my normal front view. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a series of little rectangles here. I'm going to go from this line here on the side over to this line here. And I'm going to do that a couple of times. I could be really careful about this, uh, but for now I'm just going to make myself a couple of rectangles. And now if I want to be really careful about where those, uh, those are going to become the, the parts that get, um, that get added on to, or removed from my part rather, um, to allow those parts to sort of fit together. So if I want, I can go back and I can use my dimension tool and I can make those all nice and even. Maybe I want those to be 0.25 inches each so that they're all consistent and nice and neat looking. That looks pretty good there. Maybe I want uh, to define how much space there is in between those as 0.25 as well so that I get a pretty nice, neat spacing there. And uh, maybe I want the distance from the end of this to this line to be like 0.1 inch and I could go through and adjust those things, but that all seems fine. Uh, let me turn the visibility for this part back on. And now all I'm going to do is I'm going to remove away some material right here, right here, right here, and right here. And I'll click the green check. And now what you can start to see is I've got those sections that are basically chopped away from this, uh, from this part, leaving just those sort of fingers or tabs that stick out on this part. Okay, so that gets me half of my finger joint, a box joint. 
What I need now is the rest of it. So similar kind of thing. Uh, I'm going to actually uh, I'm going to actually sketch now on. Uh, let's see what's the easiest way to do this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sketch on this face of this object right here. I'm going to go back to my front view. And now I'm going to project in those lines from my other one. I'm going to say I want this line and this line. And I want this line and this line and this line. Uh, and I want this and this and this and this and this. And actually, I'll pick these ones up here, too. And let me grab this entire back line here and click the green check. So now, same kind of thing. Uh, I can turn off the visibility on part one for a second. And now I can start extruding these parts out. So I can actually leave that on as a reference, which is kind of nice. So I want to grab this, 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 and this. But the thing is here, I want to add those on to this part and the depth that I extrude should also be the thickness of that piece of cardboard because I only want these to come through uh, the thickness of the piece of cardboard that's on the side there. So for my depth I'm going to change this to cardboard thickness and I'm going to click check and now those snap back in so they're in exactly the right size. So I've got two parts that are kind of perfectly matched up together when I go to laser cut these things, they should have the exact correct um, dimensions that I need. But if I measure my piece of cardboard and I find that those are off, um, maybe I found that I've got like a super enormous piece of cardboard and it's 0.18 inches. When I click the green check, if I've modeled this correctly, do you see how everything still just works, right? Everything automatically updated and it now uh, still just works together even though I radically like changed the size of that. I mean, I could change the size of this a lot and everything should still just work no matter what the, the thickness of the material is as long as I'm using that variable to drive the parts of my sketch and my extrudes that relies on the thickness of the cardboard.